So we talk college football exclusively here, but sometimes matters are weighty enough that they gain the attention that just cannot be ignored. So on Wednesday night, University of Miami President Julio Frank released the following statement regarding the FBI probe into corruption, money laundering, wire fraud in connection to NCAA basketball recruiting at the University of Miami, of course. Um, and, and here's just part of the statement here that uh, the U.S. Department of Justice announced that the indictments of 10 individuals involved with men's college basketball across the country on charges ranging from bribery to wire fraud. So, Cam, you're on top of this story as much as we possibly know at this point. It's only been out there for a few hours. So uh, what are your initial thoughts about what you've heard to this point? Yeah, it's been out for a while. Oh, well, not. It's been more than a couple hours. It started yesterday. Um, when the Department of Justice arrested 10 people. No one from the University of Miami was arrested, uh, but people from around. So if you've seen Chuck Person, the former Indiana Pacer who went to uh, Auburn, who was an associate coach there, he was arrested. A coach at Southern Cal was arrested. A basketball coach at um, uh, Arizona was arrested and another school as well, I forget which one. Uh, and then some other ancillary people, uh, financial managers, AAU, um, coach director of a you know AAU program, things of that nature. Um, and yeah, so basically it is just saying that um, there have been conspiracies that have gone on to um, funnel money to players. So basically the outline, and I put up an explainer on State of the U regarding Miami's interaction with this, but this basically goes for all the schools, but taking a Miami-centric focus because Miami is in there kind of. Um, well, before that, yeah. So Miami is... University 7 in the released uh, complaint from the Department of Justice. Uh, and it says that it's a private research institute in the state of Florida with uh, an enrollment that mirrors what Miami has, a uh, faculty uh, size that mirrors what Miami has, and also has Division One sports, which in the state of Florida, a private school of that size with Division One sports would be the University of Miami. Like it's been pretty much confirmed. So there, there's that. So basically what would happen is coaches from schools would tell shoe companies, the one that's been indicted so far is Adidas. So the coach would tell an Adidas executive, hey, I want this player to come to my school. So what you need to do is give him $100,000, $150,000, whatever it is to entice him to come to my school. And the understanding would be that Adidas or the shoe company would communicate with a financial manager and an agent. And it would be through those people that they would funnel money to the AAU coaches and the AAU coaches would then give them to the players. And that's where the money laundering goes in because it would not be directly to the players. Now the backside is, and the players would then commit to the school of the coach who said, hey, I want to start this chain. On the back end, the coach would then take bribes from the financial managers and the agents and the shoe company to make sure that the player who they recruited and gave this money to, when they go pro, signs with the shoe company and the financial manager and the agent who helped. So it's it's a it's a cyclical thing where it goes back and forth. I put up a whole explainer going through the Miami interaction of that. Basically, it says that there's an unnamed coach from Miami who started that whole chain talking about a specific player, which we through connections of the AAU coach who was arrested, we know who that player is. I'm not going to say his name in public like this, but it's written on the website. It's 99% confirmed. It's, you know, been deducted that it's this player. Um, and so, yeah, at the university and this player. Now, the thing about it is Miami, or University 7, was bidding against University 4, which has been con uh, confirmed to be Arizona through the arrest of their coach and then other subsequent things, which our SB Nation brothers at Arizona Desert Swarm have been all on top of because their coach's name is out there and all kinds of things like that. So Miami was bidding against Arizona or a school represented by a rival shoe company um, for this player at the $150,000 price point. So it's going back and forth. Now, this player has not committed anywhere. Miami has zero commits in the 2018 recruiting class. And the interesting thing is, the player, if you read the piece and his name is in there, is scheduled to take an official visit to Miami this weekend, which got rescheduled because of Hurricane Irma, tying everything back together. 
Now, it remains to be seen if that player actually makes the visits, if any visits happen pretty much anywhere this week because the FBI, actually, I just retweeted something at 9 o'clock p.m. as we're recording this, saying that uh, FBI is going to release more indictments tomorrow about this. So there's just all kinds of things going on. So, yeah, you know, President Frank came out and he, you know, just said, you know, uh, it confirmed that the University of Miami is under FBI investigation as, uh, you know, connected to uh, this FBI scandal of whatever, you know, all of the bribing and money laundering, corruption, collusion, uh, you know, and conspiracy, obviously, because when you have multiple people talking about doing a certain thing, uh, that's conspiracy. Uh, and for Miami, it would be a conspiracy count because no money exchanged hands from the release report and the kid hasn't gone anywhere. So, and it seemed to be that Miami was going to lose that bidding battle because basically Adidas or Company One in the indictment or the complaint, I should say, said that they didn't have it in the budget right now to do, to have that conversation. But if the, if the AAU coach was able to get the kid to wait until 2018, meaning January or later, then different things would pop up and there could be a conversation had. So um, it's interesting. There's it's just a lot of hearsay. Um, and there's been people who have said, oh, it's this coach or it's that coach. Just like the player, I'm not going to put a name out there because you don't know which coach it is. If there are further indictments and if somebody gets arrested tomorrow on Thursday, September 28th, from the time that we're recording this, and it happens to be somebody associated with the University of Miami basketball program, and it's been confirmed, then I'll put a name out there. Uh, and I know people are, you know, uh, they're speculating that it's a specific assistant coach because in an interview with Rivals back when he took an unofficial visit to Miami, the player in question mentioned one of the specific assistant coaches as being a cool guy that he got along with and liked. Coach, who is the one that's in the, uh, the complaint. It could be another assistant coach. I'm not sure. But since I'm not sure, I'm not going to tarnish anybody's reputation by putting it out there. Um, and I know that that's, you know, probably three or four minutes of, well, maybe even longer, of kind of a winding road. But, you know, it's definitely not a linear situation. But, yeah, this is a, a major kind of thing uh, that's going on. And uh, from a personal standpoint, uh, I I got very angry yesterday morning when um, – I started getting DMs about it uh, from somebody before, like the big news broke. Because if you've been following this, the big news was basically about Univers uh, Louisville, which is University Six from the indictment and everything. Which you know they fired their athletic director already. They fired you know Rick Pitino, and everybody's talking about Louisville and Arizona and Auburn because you know names are out there and people are getting fired and arrested. And somebody's DMing me and saying you need to read this because University Seven is Miami, and I'm just sitting you know at my desk like. You know, it's about to hit the fan and nobody's looking over here, but all of a sudden shoo, they're going to be looking my way. Um, and I don't like having to cover this kind of stuff. And I dealt with the Nevin Shapiro scandal. And, you know, Mark, you've known and we've spoken off air that, you know, this is supposed to be state of the U coming out season. Like Miami is supposed to be a really good football team. We have great content. We have good contributors. Like I've been hyping up this season in terms of blogging and writing and running this website for years. And, um, it sucks that there's something like this going on. It, it feels like they're, you know, trying to kill my joy. But, you know, I'm going to – I was here through 58 nothing to Clemson. I've been here through, you know, 500 seasons and now Golden and losing bowl games every year for a decade. And I'm not going to go anywhere. So I'm going to be here. But uh, I'm definitely – uh, saddened and personally angry that I have to do these kind of things and talk about this and cover this. But uh, it, it re is a ongoing situation. It's a developing story and definitely one that we'll stay on top of at State of the U. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll put up as much stuff as we have. We'll, uh, you know, when things have been reported and, you know, all the commentary and analysis that you can look for, uh, we're going to try to have for you on State of the U. But that's kind of the lay of the land right now in terms of Miami's involvement with the FBI probe into money laundering, collusion, corruption, uh, and conspiracy in terms of, my, uh, excuse me, college basketball recruiting. And uh, when there's anything else to say or be said or known, then, you know, we'll be on the website saying it, so be sure that you check it out.